Hi, everyone. Mm. I'm Yvette Nicole Brown, the biggest and most diehard How to Get Away with Murder fan. So I hacked the system and made my way in to host this one of a kind after party with the cast. Now, if you are a fan mm. like me, your hearts are still pounding from that heartbreaking yet impressively satisfying finale. So here they are. Hi, everybody. Hi. Hi. <laughs> So good to see you all. I wish this could have been something we did in person, but I'm so glad to be able to do this final mm -hmm. gathering of this phenomenal cast and this great creator and celebrate mm -hmm. this groundbreaking series. Now, my first question has to go to the mastermind behind mm -hmm. all of this. Mm -hmm. Series creator and executive producer, Pete Nowak! Oh! <laughs> Peter! Mm -hmm. First of all, thank you. And I'm saying this mm -hmm. for all the fans. You created an amazing show that has you know, taken us through the ringer. So, Thank you for that, sir. And here is my question. And, and I'm a nerd guy, so I have cards. I really prepared. Okay, so Peter, they like that. did mm -hmm. you know how the show would end? And did you always know that the last shot would be Annalise walking into her hereafter? Um, you know, Viola planted a seed in my head, which she does mm -hmm. pretty much every day when we were working together. I miss it. <laughs> <laughs> um, that maybe Annalise should die and what a good uh, mystery that would be. And um, I got that that was a good storyline, but I also just couldn't do that to the character um, and really do that to the audience, which I considered myself to be one of them. Just, you know, I didn't want to see Annalise have gotten through all that just to get murdered. Yeah. Um, now some other characters, maybe. So. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> Sorry, man. Yeah. But, um, wow, wow. Glad she was, yeah. <laughs> Not Matt, never Matt. Um, she, I'm glad she planted the seed because then it made me think like, okay, how could I have my cake and eat it too? And that's when I really woke up uh, like over our hiatus last year, just being like, oh, Alfie can play Christopher. And it all just the timing and how old Alfie is and what it would work out to be, the ages that Christopher was a boy and not a girl. Um, it felt like a revelation and it, did, it definitely didn't feel like something I came up with. It was just there. Um, then I just had to like pitch it to people and hope that they didn't roll their eyes or laugh at it because I loved it so much. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> so was that decided early on or was that something you thought when we're going into the sixth season, this is how it's going to end? Um, it was decided before we started writing the 60s and I think that's mm -hmm. why it made it a lot easier to end it because it felt like such a perfect ending and then also instantly like having the feeling of like oh Christopher can teach the class, the class. He sure yeah did. and he did. uh it's just like it's kind of perfect and bookendy which I normally would hate but it just I loved it and I and I hope people like it I, I think you I also it. started realizing how much we were aging all of us <laughs> Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we were like, okay, how do I fit in that these people look so much older? Oh my God. That's what I thought when we did that. that room. Well, you know, well, let's talk about it. I want to shout out. And watch the first episode. Ooh. I want to actually shout out uh, the makeup people on this show. I asked specifically oh, to get yeah. some names because that dog on aging makeup and just, you guys just look good every week anyway. Um, supervising mm. makeup is Sergio Lopez Rivera. Oh, uh, yes. Yeah. 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 was Leslie Lightfoot. Viola's mm. you know, hair was Miss Jamika Wilson. Now girl, call me. Oh, you, Jamika. Yeah. Mm. And costume head was Lynn Paolo. So I want to make sure I shout oh, those people good. out in the entire crew. We all know that crew is life, so we got to give them a little love. Now I'm going to move over to Miss Viola Davis, Emmy winner, first mm. drama lead actress that looks like me. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Um, and I feel like after that mm. summation, you just going to get just going to get the other one. Just tell everybody don't even apply because after that summation, honey, it's yours. <laughs> um, you know that I love me some you. Um, I could go on forever about your gifts and and what they've meant to me as a black woman and as an actress. But I wanted to know at what at what point did you decide? that Annalise was gonna lay it all bare. Because there are things that you said, there's some heat that you put on the word exhausted that yep. completely <laughs> explains the journey as a black woman, not just as an actress, but in the world. So when did you say, now's the time, I'm gonna take this wig off in this season, I'm gonna talk about a wig versus natural hair. And like, when did you say this is the time to do it and I wanna use this character to do it? From the moment I got the role, 
<laughs> Listen, I know I exist as a dark skinned black woman with a wide nose and big lips who Come is on. always called ugly, 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 mm -hmm. but I am not that woman. And yeah. I think that that real woman needed to be introduced to the world. And this was a perfect narrative to introduce her. That everything that, uh, how we've been defined in the past has been an absolute lie. Yes. Created to sort of pacify our oppressors, right? Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, Shonda, Pete, no walk in creating this character and in casting me. Because they cast me, I had to walk into this role as a woman and a real person, not yes. as a one-dimensional metaphoric stereotype. So as I could either walk into it with courage or I can walk into it with pacificity. Mm -hmm. And I didn't want to do that. I wanted to say, mm -hmm. yes, I do have sexual organs. I am vulnerable. I am complicated. Um, so the moment I got the role and listen, here's the thing. I didn't buy it even. I believed all those things that people have always said about me. I always believed that that was the truth. But here's the big thing too. I had to believe it. But more importantly, this cast, I mean, I know they don't want to hear it. This is not an ego driven. Well, sometimes y'all, but not really. <laughs> y'all are not ego driven, but they had to believe it. And listen, you're only as good as your peers a lot of times and the cast around you. And you know, they, 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 what can I say about this cast? So they, they bought it, they bought me, or even if they didn't buy me, you faked it really well. For the last <laughs> well, we as, we as viewers definitely bought it. And you know, as a black woman, thank you. Because oh, it, it, no they, they are lies and, and you revealed <laughs> the beauty of all of us in that moment and throughout this season, season and this series. So thank you very much. Thank you. Yes, babe. So I am now going to move over to Liza. Uh, girl, <laughs> girl, you are the truth. Do you hear Amen. me? You are uh, the doggone mm -hmm. truth. I don't know that I've ever seen someone play uh, despair and heartbreak. And uh, uh, I just don't know that I've ever seen a face that can show that level of despair and heartbreak the way your sweet little face does. Um, mm -hmm. How was it playing Bonnie's last heartbreak? And what was it like having Charlie and Viola as your main scene partners for all of the difficult work that you had to do? <laughs> yeah. Um, well, thank you. That's, mm -hmm. that's a very lovely thing to say. I really appreciate that. Mm -hmm. um, it was really wonderful. I think it was a really, you know, um, it, it was an interesting journey, I think, from, from what we were thinking for the beginning of the season and, and how, because I do think, Pete, that there were, you know, thoughts of, of really wanting Bonnie to have a different kind of, of ending there was a lot of advocates i think in the writer's room that were really rooting for her to really be able to walk into the sunset especially with, with bonnie her. yeah because yeah she's just <laughs> um, so much yeah and um so it was interesting through the course of the season and i think uh, through i think was it our midway our half point meeting i think we both sort of were like i don't know if she can really <laughs> sort of survive all this stuff um mm -hmm. So once we really got to that point, it did feel very right that, um, you know, I think certainly the loss of Frank would not be something that, that Bonnie could, could overcome uh, and yeah. be okay. Um, <laughs> but yeah, that day was, was really something. Um, and it was such a gift, I think, for all of us to be able to kind of have that kind of ending with our characters. Um, I think Bonnie and, and Frank and Annalise are all, you know, were the, the, the threesome that, that have, you know, been so bound for, for this six years. So to be able to end it together, I think was really beautiful. Um, uh, but yeah, it was intense day. And yeah. Viola was, I mean, it was, you know, I was sort of joking to everybody afterwards where I was like, I was just trying to die as quickly as possible. <laughs> yeah. And let her go. And then let her go. Yeah. 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 I was just like, I got to get out of your way. Yeah. Um, but it was, it was, it was really something. Um, but I'm, yeah, I feel really um, grateful that we got to kind of end it, end it all together. Yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. And the idea <laughs> that, that there is, there goes my dog, Harley. Now, come on now. I'm talking to the cast of How to Get Away with Murder. Cut it out. <laughs> Um, the fact that there's beauty in tragedy, I thought that's what that moment was. Like you, we, so, you know, we're in this situation, this this whole pandemic situation, and we have to be able to find a little flower within all of this yuck. And I feel like that yeah. moment was that. It was beautiful, even though it was heartbreaking. Well, you brought him up, so let's go on down to Charlie. Hi, Charlie. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now, I always saw Frank as equally ferocious and broken. Um, we found out his true origin story. When did you find that out? And um, how did that inform your choices as you portrayed him in these last couple of episodes? You know, it was interesting, um, you know, when Pete asked me about uh, Tom and the whole thing, and, and um, actually it was odd to, for me, I sort of jumped at it and I don't even know why. And I, I can be a little combative when it comes to a big choice that's thrown at me. And, and with this one, something made sense about it. It, it. it was so crazy, but at the same time, um, it wrapped up so many things in my brain right when he said it to me that mm. I wanted to go forward with it. And I was actually, Tom, I was in an interview the other day and for me, it wasn't a problem. It wasn't a compromise because that information was new to Frank. Whereas uh, uh, Sam, uh, Tom is Sam, now has to think back and have me. <laughs> oh, right. right. And that was, <laughs> that would have been a very scary oh, project for me, but I had it easy. <laughs> Uh, because that was new information. But it, for me, it surmised a lot of things, the relationship with Sam, a lot of things going on with Frank. And and I'm not sure Frank can actually process that. So it mm -hmm. didn't really affect too greatly what I did. Okay, understood. Um, hi, Jack. Hi, Funkin. Mm -hmm. um, this, this is gonna sound weird, but I want you to go with me. You, okay. made, you made Connor likable. Guys like Connor on first blush, you see him across the room, you go, I know that guy. I know what he's about. You made all of us, all the fans love him. And that's a strength of, of what you bring as an actor. What I wanted to know is all of your scenes with Conrad as Ali were just, oh, just delicious. And the, all of the breaking up and are we gonna get divorced, let's not, all of that stuff. What was it like for you guys in those moments, as is for you Conrad as well, and was Ali was 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 Connor just being stubborn, hmm. or was he really sacrificing for love when he was insisting? No, this is how we gonna do it. I'm gonna go to I'm gonna do these five years. What was what was he thinking? What do you think he was thinking in that moment? Um, well, thank you. First of all, it's very kind. Well, baby, um, you know I love you. You know I love you. <laughs> but you know, to Viola's earlier point, I think mm -hmm. that Connor became likable being sharing the screen with. <laughs> Conrad is all. Yeah, Oliver. I agree. Um, and I don't know if that was Pete's intention originally for the character that he would sort of become this domestic, lovable, and uh, person full of empathy. Mm. Um, and you know, that first scene with with Conrad was was quite literally fireworks. So mm -hmm. we had to keep him around, and yeah, I'm glad we did because it really turned into something beautiful. I think. But to answer your question, I think that. It was a sacrifice that Connor made for Oliver, but also one, a journey that he had to go on himself mm -hmm. um, that sort of to be atoned for these sins that he felt that he'd committed and helped commit, um, that he needed to repent and that he deserved to go to prison. Um, so part of that is selfish a little bit, mm -hmm. I think, but ultimately, you know, I know there was a lot of discussion in the back and forth of what their fate would be ultimately. And um, I'm glad that they ended up together. I Me know too. people have been pretty stressed out about that. Um, <laughs> Be happy. Yeah, yeah, of course. Um, and part of me always knew they would, you know, I mm -hmm. knew there'd be some, some big um, bumps along the way. But uh, yeah, I felt like uh, Conrad and I were able to develop this chemistry that mm -hmm. that was sort of undeniable and um you know that paired with pete and all of our amazing writers uh scenes that they gave us it just you know groundbreaking it, for network television scenes which i yeah. think blessed thank us you, all pete. yes thank you pete thank you pete mm -hmm. um i'm gonna bump down to conrad um first of all older ollie was a silver fox yes he was <laughs> <laughs> and we just talked about how cute you were with all that gray. Um, 
How was that uh, hair and makeup oh, experience thanks. specifically for you? Did you know you were going to be so fine? <laughs> and did you feel a sense of completion knowing that Ali and, and Connor ended up together? Oh, yeah. I mean, the hair and makeup experience was crazy. I mean, breathing through a straw while they cast your whole face. Like, that's Whoa. just something I'd never gone through. Oh, wait, no, not breathing through a straw. What? Did we have straw? No, I, don't, I can't remember. <laughs> uh, but yeah, they, but it was like a three, it was a three hour process where you just sat still and then they just like cast your whole face. Um, so that was fun. Uh, I have a little time lapse video of it. Um, and then uh, in terms of Connor and Oliver, like uh, ending up together. Uh -oh. um, I'm also happy they didn't, uh, you know. Oh together. no. Good dialogue. Wait, Conrad, go back oh. a little bit because you you yeah. froze. We want to make sure we get that. So go back and talk specifically about about oh. Connor and Ollie. We just lost a little bit of that ending up together. Oh yeah, no yeah. In terms of Connor and Oliver, I'm really happy that they did end up together. But I'm 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 happy that they broke up. I don't think any relationship can be built on all of these lies <laughs> um, and all of this like pain and suffering like I'm, has shown how it's all of these secrets and all is like nope that's why nobody connects mm -hmm. in a real way these characters can never connect in a real way until they like repent and you know live a life of like truth and honesty mm. yeah that's a that's a word um Asia, girl. <laughs> Michaela, Michaela worked my nerves. She worked oh. me over. My emotions were all <laughs> over the place. I was rooting for you. I wanted to fight you. <sighs> you know I love you. So I, I'm, I'm trying to work through my feelings because I haven't. Okay. What was Michaela's driving force? Now, was it just ambition? And how do you feel about ooh. the characters? And I just, girl, like, ooh, you, ooh, you, ooh. Ooh, ooh Michaela. I mean, oh, ooh, she got me. And she got me, girl. I know. <laughs> oh. I'm sorry. I didn't write it. You okay. Know, <laughs> but let me say this before you answer. I do feel that the writers did you a solid by the whole speech about I've already been in jail and I've been through exactly. this. Exactly. Like, I feel like that brought me back. Yeah, I, well, I was done, girl. That's I was good. done. Okay. I know. Trust me, a lot of people online are <laughs> telling me how done they are with me. <laughs> they are so upset at Michaela, but honestly, I like it's messed up, yes, but I also think it shows a lot of growth on Michaela's part. Mm -hmm. Like, Yes, she loves this woman. She admires her. She has wanted to be her for six seasons. She has had this, this desperate need for her approval. And she has moved beyond that now. Mm -hmm. She's like, I've got to look out for my own survival. I've got to do the very thing that this woman taught me to do in the first mm -hmm. place, which was to survive so that I can create a legacy of my own and maybe one day reach down and help out some other little person that can turn around and backstab me when I need help. <laughs> <laughs> oh. but, but at the end of the day, like, yeah, like I, I love that speech learning, learning in such detail, everything that Michaela had been through. I mean, she had always called her childhood hell yeah. and and yeah, and I think she feels like, look, I've, I've already paid my penance. Mm -hmm. Like I, I wasn't, I, it was not my fault that these people died and I should not go down I for it. I should not suffer for what they Like did. I should not suffer for what all these fools <laughs> did trying to drag me down. <laughs> and so Michaela said, look, you know, it's wrong, but a woman's got to do what a woman's, woman's got to do. Gotta do. Um, and I she do, was built to thrive. I do. I'm happy that she becomes a judge. I'm going to believe she became a Supreme Court judge. I know it was a quiet little office. I like and it wasn't, that, yes. but I'm going to believe that. Um, hi, Carla. Hi, Pumpkin. Hi. How are you? <laughs> um, you, you gave Laurel such quiet strength. And, and like 
Michaela, Asia's Michaela. And there were times I did not like, now Laura got on my, got, she got to me too a couple of times. But <laughs> what I love is that she was redeemed. And I think that that was important. But I do have a, a really special question. Now, now, Laura has escaped literally a few times. She has escaped and run from all things the Keating Five. Then we find out at the end that she lets her dear sweet baby become the protege of Annalise Keaton. So explain how that <laughs> came to be. I know you didn't write it, but you got to, as a fan, you got to let me know why Christopher was smiling at a, a ghost Annalise after everything. So you gonna tell me why it happened that way. I need to know why. Wait, this is not a me question. This is a me question. I, I want to know your motivation <laughs> as a mother. <laughs> What do you think she was thinking? So I think that he started, there was some pandemic going on. So he <laughs> heard the law through Zoom calls. And so Emily's Keating had a lot of Zoom classes. And so he went on secretly behind my back. That's what I'm talking about. Learned from Annalise Keating. Then Aww. came to me saying, this woman is on fire. She's changing my life. I'm learning so much. And at first I'm like, don't you dare come near her. I put all these locks <laughs> on my computer on like Wi-Fi. I'm like, you cannot see this Annalise person. I don't care. And then I then start realizing he's like got anyway, like so so that's how he gets a hold of Annalise Keating. And then he decides to mend our relationship and oh. us together, Annalise and I. And he is able mm -hmm. for me to, you know, not only forgive, but for both of you know, forgiveness and confessions and all that stuff. And for us to realize that, you know, there is redemption in relationships if we're willing to, you know, really be real and be open to apologizing the right. You know, I'm sorry the sermon got stopped because that was an amazing sermon. You explained yeah. it perfectly. <laughs> Carla, really come good. back. Carla, <laughs> come back. <laughs> oh. Uh, <laughs> As, as a mom, you really, like, you have no control over your kids. So I guess at that point, she just realizes, like, I can't get in the way of what, you know, what Christopher wants to do in his life. So I might as well just, you know, watch him shine. So that's my answer. You know what, <laughs> as, as answers go, that was some amazing backstory. And I, I'm going to believe that that's how it happened. Because otherwise... Otherwise, no, I think that's great. Um, hi, Matt. Hey, Matt. Oh, wait, you're muted. Wait, oh, there Hello. you go. Here I am. <laughs> okay, Matt, your Asher provided some much needed uh, comedy relief throughout the season. Um, how much of Asher's <laughs> silliness lives in you as a human being? And when did you know that he wasn't gonna make it? Yeah, mm -hmm. good question. I think, um, pretty silly um mm -hmm. i'm also very serious <laughs> and, mm -hmm. and and um i was gonna say the word intense but i don't know if i i think that was a negative connotation I'm, I'm i'm i think equal parts both and i think for me um actually i think some of what i've learned from asher is is embracing that silliness um you know i think actually you know when i first became an actor uh you know like so many people were the people we choose to look up to in professions, right? I was, I was like very interested in these like very traditional ideas of like, um, of like masculinity and these men who were like very stoic um, and, you know, like the typical like action star sort of guy. Um, and I, I never saw my like humor and my comedy and, mm -hmm. and sort of the silliness as like an actual plus, right? And then it, mm -hmm. it wasn't until as an artist that it, you know, it was me actually learning that, oh, this is actually what I have that is unique to offer this. And like, I think some combination of um, sensitivity, emotional intelligence, and like trying to kind of fuse that together, which uh, is important because it's part of who I am. It's also a part of my um, politics uh, that I want to put into the world, right? Creating different visions of masculinity. Um, and also uh, as an artist to be able to sort of, you know, I think so often, again, what we see um, and who we see represented um, in many ways, obviously, and, and for identities, they're uh, way more uh, marginalized, but yeah. to be able to create alternative visions um, is how we shift culture. Um, and so for me, both being able to embrace that and lean into that um, for myself and also for kind of uh, uh, 
you know, I think the project as a whole has been really um, great. And I, you know, I started this show before I identified as an activist um, and I was very mm. silly, but I like to think that I've maintained my sense of humor. It's just not problematic nearly as much now. Yeah. Um, but, you know, I, I think that it's, for me, like humor and levity is such an important thing because for so long I took myself so seriously. Yeah. Um, and it was very hard on myself and to be able to lean into that and find sort of the duality of that um, has actually provided me a great deal of joy and sustenance through the moments of more um, difficulty or, or seriousness. Yeah, I think it's really important because to be a comedian, you have to be fearless. And I think that kind of opens up every other area of your life. So I, I'm glad that that is what happened for you. I am going to bounce down to Rome Flynn. Hi, Rome. I was on mute, on mute, my bad. How you, How you doing? Good. <laughs> now, <clears throat> I have a, a two-part question. Um, just so everybody knows, I flirt with Rome online all the time, so I'm going to be very oh. professional. We're going steady. I'm going to be, be y'all heard him say that we go steady. Now, I didn't say that, but Rome did, so I'm going to let that live in the interwebs forever. So, um, I'm going to be very professional now, Rome. Okay. What was it like for you to join this family of actors, and what do you think was misunderstood about Gabriel? And will you please play Bruce Leroy in the remake of The Last Dragon that I have in my mind? <laughs> Absolutely. Oh. <Yeah>. Uh, <laughs> uh, okay, well, you know, it was a dream, honestly. I had already watched this show uh, before I was an actor, honestly. And I knew about it, but uh, to be among them, I just had a lot of respect for them and I just wanted to fit in, you know, I just wanted them to like me, you know, and, and I was so nervous about that because, you know, you join a show where uh, people are as good as they are, you know, actors who, who really know their craft. It was challenging to get over my own kind of insecurities within myself, you know what I mean? And, and they all did their own kind of way of, of helping me through that um, without probably even knowing it. But, um, you know, it's been a great joy to be able to be around them and see what their personality is like in comparison to who their characters are. And Bruce Leroy, listen, sign me up. Yeah. <laughs> okay. As soon as I get Mr. Gordy to say yes, we're gonna go and get this going in my mind. We're gonna get it going. Um, hi, Tom. Hi, Tom. How hey, are you? Good. How are you? Good to see you. I am good, good to see you. Um, you are, aside from being an amazing actor, you are also a director. So what does that, how does being a director color the way that you portray a role? Uh, I, I really, um, I think it opened me up a lot more. I think I, mm -hmm. knew, I, I made the process easier on, on guest directors because I knew what they were going through. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but I think I also, um, because they're, you know, what I loved about coming over to Murder, and I never directed on Murder, and I, I was, um, I kind of I'm glad that that didn't happen because I was able to just walk in as this character and really mm -hmm. um, escape and, and uh, into this world without thinking. There's so many elements to directing and producing uh, on Scandal. I was doing Scandal, most of Scandal at the time. And it was really kind of a, a respite to come over two stages over and lay in a pool of blood for a while. It was kind, yeah, of, totally it was kind of relaxing. <laughs> Uh, no, it would really, uh, I think it, it gave me a lot more insight. It was a lot easier to, uh, I, I, I found I wouldn't really be thinking about what directors were going through. I was really able to escape into uh, this character and, and particularly with these uh, acting partners who are all amazing. All yeah. amazing. Um, I, I have one more cast member that I have to talk to directly and then we're going to have just a couple of quick questions for you guys as a group. I need to go down to Miss Amira. Hi, Pumpkin. Hi, friend. Hi, friend. Um, you know I love you. You know that, listen, I, I could go on about you as well. Um, what I loved about Tegan was her joy. She was a fierce attorney, but you played her with such a gleam in your eye. So I wanted to know, what did you love about playing Tegan? Because it was there was so much duality in her, and she's in love with, with Annalise. She's hiding it. She's... She didn't send Laurel hiding somewhere and nobody knows about that. So she had all of this duality, but the joy was throughout all. So what was it like for you? Um, I don't know where she got that joy from because, you know, I'm a miserable person. <laughs> <laughs> Not true. <laughs> 
But um, no, I think it was nice to actually bring that part of my personality to a character. I didn't mm-hmm. know that she was going to be that much fun. But uh, that's just what it became. I think it's, I was having so much fun. Started off with Asia. Mm-hmm. And uh, Asia's my girl. I just think there's, there was no way to play with all of these people. Everyone brought put a smile on my face in some way that I think that it was just, I couldn't escape that. You know, yeah. so I embraced it and said, you know what? She's going to be a badass who just happens to have some fun, you know? Yeah. Um, and that was fun to explore. Remember, mm-hmm. Bob, we had that scene where I said, when you said she's fine, and I said, is she, like, fine or is she, like, fine? You know? <laughs> <laughs> that was a lot of fun for me, you know, mm-hmm. um, that we found. But uh, I think the best thing that I got from her was her power. Mm-hmm. You know, Amira is a little bit, I'm not as organized and, you know, it, you wouldn't think that, mm-hmm. but it's very true. Tegan is, Tegan is way more organized than I am. So I aspire to kind of be as focused and locked in as, as she is. She's a boss and she stands in her power and to be able to just get a little taste of that was a, a huge gift. I love it. Thank you all for answering my personal questions. I now have a couple of group questions. So you just get in where you fit in. Um, <laughs> in this mm-hmm. finale, One of my favorite lines is something that Nate says to Annalise. He says, speaking of himself, he said, I got to own my side of the road, which is a journey that we each have to have in life. Do you guys feel that each of your characters ultimately owned your side of the road? Whoever wants to get in, get in. I didn't have a choice. No, you did not, because they killed you. (laughs) Get in, get in. Right early. I believe I did. I did. I owned you up did. to the fact that I'm I'm a horrible person. I'm not the I'm not I mean not horrible, but amazingly flawed. Okay. But not necessarily a murderer. So I think that ultimately I did hold myself accountable for my part in all of it. Mm-hmm. I think Anybody? That, that last monologue so powerful because Liza and I were sitting next to each other went in that quarter. Uh, and yeah, we were, we were doing everything <laughs> to not fall apart <laughs> because I, mean, I, saw that, I saw that moment of you just kind of saying, I'm letting it all out, this is who I am. And it mm-hmm. was a beauty to behold that day, just even in it the really was. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay. Anybody else? Everybody owning their side of the mm-hmm. road? How about you, uh, Asia? Did Michaela own? Her side of the road. Uh, why? Yes, I think Michaela did own her side of the road. She just went in the direction that people weren't expecting. Yeah. But that was very much on the road she said she was going down. Yeah. It's like, I'm not going to jail. I've been there, done that, don't need no more. Thank you. I like your commitment. I will allow it. I will allow it. Anybody else? Everybody feel? I mean, I know some of it was seen. We saw that Connor owned his side of the road. We, there's some people that we saw did it, but if anyone is like, I don't know, Charlie. Yeah, I think Oliver like mm-hmm. owned it because Connor like decided to go to jail. Oliver was then forced to stand on his own, like after all, like all of this time of leaning on Connor and mm-hmm. the confidence that he that he got from the relationship. I think then he had to go out into the world and make his own way instead of you know having that relationship be what defined him. Um, this is a, um, it's a, it's a fun question, but I don't want anybody to incriminate themselves. So if you would like to plead the fifth on this one, you can. We're all lawyers in here. None I will ahead of time. Okay, none of us are. Okay, <laughs> I have been on shows that have ended and I have allegedly left with some things that I did not come with. Now, I'm not gonna ask <laughs> you what you took. I'm going to ask you what you wish you took. What do you wish? Come on, Viola Davis. <laughs> well, I took a lot of stuff. Allegedly. Before, maybe a little before I was given permission to. Allegedly. <laughs> but I wish I had taken that leather chair. But I think somebody else got that leather chair that was in my apartment. I'm not going to say who it is, but his name starts with a P. But I did, take, I did take a picture. I took a lot of dishes. I did the same thing. Yeah. I took a lot of stuff from Annalise's apartment. Understood. Nice, Viola. Oh, wait, you're telling I got this yourself, dog. Jack. You're telling me This is all I got, a ceramic dog. Jack, Listen, what do you wish you had taken? What were you eyeing that you wish you could have got out of there? All of Viola's stuff, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> Her car, her car. kitchen, 
Oh, that kitchen. Hey, Charlie, did you Ooh, get the glove? I wanted Tegan's car. The, glove, Charlie? the Maybach. Uh, those uh, Frank's murder gloves are in a display case in my house. Come get them. See, you know what? Oh, <laughs> told y'all not to incriminate yourself, and you're here incriminating yourself. And I asked for the Maybach, too. I asked for the We're Maybach. Not <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, you're not getting right. that Maybach. <laughs> <laughs> We've clearly learned nothing over the past six I'm, years. <laughs> I'm seeing this. Are there any any behind the scenes moments? Someone told me to ask about Tom's blood spot story. Is there a blood spot story? Oh, there's a f quite a few of them. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, there was a. Uh, I, I much of the first season, uh, being in flashback, uh, we came back quite often to the scene of the crime where I had to lay in a pool of blood, and there was a uh, uh, props had come up with a plastic. Uh, puddle of blood that they would enhance with uh, syrup. So mm. I, uh, I, I may have been given the puddle, plastic puddle. Oh, good. I'm glad you got it. Uh, <laughs> we pondered. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Peter, uh, this is a replica of, uh, of St. Clair's carcass. Um, <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> A replica, oh, obviously. <laughs> oh, obviously. How about you guys? Do you have Do you have Bonnie's pink suit? I don't have the pink suit. I didn't uh, opt for that. I do have a couple of her other suits, though. And I was really hoping to take this painting in Bonnie's um, house that the art department recreated for me. That's so um, amazing. I have it hanging hanging downstairs. It was a really, really lovely, oh. lovely thing. That's yeah, that's Tim. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Crew is live. It's awesome. Uh, um, I think, we're I think we're kind of wrapping <laughs> up because I feel like I've kept you guys long enough. I do have one more question for Peter. Um, hi. <laughs> hi. I love minutia. I love little things that I can see or peep or try to figure out. And that walk with Annalise at the end with holding all the hands, um, stuck with me and I, I wanted to know, and you can, listen, you can share, you can not. This, is, this finale was so satisfying and we all get to, as fans, we get to decide what each thing means and make our own way. If you wanna share, you can. I was just wondering, were those hands her greatest loves, her biggest triumphs, her biggest lessons? Who were each of those people that she walked a bit of life through, if you wanna share? I'm gonna say yes. To all of it. All of it. <laughs> well, you know what I'm going to be doing. I'm going to be rewinding and trying to see if I can see a vein yeah. that looks like somebody I know. <laughs> exactly. I think I want what people to do exactly what you did and what Carla did, which is to come up with their own stories. Um, Carla. And I, I love the hand so much. I think it turned out so beautiful because, you know, we cast little people. Oops. That's my hound. Thank God it's not just mine. <laughs> Lord, yeah. thank you. It's okay. It's dinner time. Um, we cast different people in those roles that like represented all types of people, I hope. So, you know, I wish we could have had 20, but I don't think Annalise had time to have 20 mm. hand-holding loves in her <laughs> life. Um, you know, whether they're friends or lovers, I just think it speaks to what a specific life she had and that she was open to everyone. And that's like, the, my proudest thing about the show is that all of these characters represented people that we don't see a lot and I'm when, gonna mute myself. okay <laughs> I'm so glad it's not my dog y'all um what I want to say when I got asked if I would would host this um I literally pinched myself I know people say they pinched themselves but I literally pinched myself because I'm like this can't be possible because you guys know what a big fan of the show I am I'm such a big fan I follow the writer's room of the show like, I just <laughs> love this show and i wanted to take this time selfishly for me to thank each of you for your gifts for your dedication i have worked on a single camera show i know the hours everything you guys brought every year on this set was a blessing it was a master class in acting mm -hmm. um i have never seen people cry better i saw viola with the one glory tear in this episode uh conrad had the shaky mm -hmm. hand while he was crying like you guys cry better than anybody <laughs> Hopes better than anybody you love better than anybody mm -hmm. and it has been my joy and honor to take this six-year ride with you and i'm so happy you guys said yes i'm um, thank you thank you thank yeah. you for all your little mm -hmm. kisses saying thank you. Um, oh, I'm gonna... this is our last press thing. Is it? Oh. Oh. Hey, 
Is there anything you guys want to say? Anything you want to say to each other? Anything you want to say to the fans? Anything you want to say to me? I love you guys. Love you guys. I love you. Love you guys. Love you guys. Best six year ride. Ah, my life, really. Greatest group of actors, people, all of you guys are awesome. And the best welcoming you. y'all could ever mm-hmm. ask for. Yeah. 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 I agree. And just know that the fans felt that every week, even if y'all were fighting each other, stabbing each other in the back, or murdering each other, because y'all killed a lot of people. We all felt that you guys were cohesive. I forgot how many people we killed. When they did the list in the dog going to the like, Denver, I forgot all about Denver. I was like, how the hell did he die? Yeah. <laughs> y'all killed a lot of people. Y'all got away with all, well, some of y'all got away. Some got of y'all paid. Of yeah. <laughs> yeah, got away with most of it. Yeah. So I'm going to do my little outro now so you guys can just smile in your little boxes and I'm going to say my goodbye. Mm-hmm. Okay. Thank you all for joining and congratulations on this suspenseful, wild, emotional, and deeply human series. The show will live well past this six year run and you all have so much to look back on and be proud of and such bright and dynamic futures ahead. Thanks to the fans for watching and supporting. Thank you guys for saying yes to talking with me. And thank you again, Peter, for creating this wonderful show for all of us to enjoy. I love you guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We love you. Love you guys so much.